Jason, we got to start with the Rams and Jeff Fisher finally fired. But it begs a follow-up question. Who else is out in L.A. after the season? Uh, look, there, there's going to be sweeping changes there. Les Snead won't be back as the general manager. And then it remains to be seen, you know, Kevin Demoff, who, who sort of is the de facto owner there because, you know, solid Stan Kroenke isn't going to be seen and heard from very often. He's not going to be super involved in the day-to-day -day operations. No, there, there could be a situation where they bring in some sort of football czar and Kevin's sole fo focus then turns after putting the dream team in place to getting that stadium built on time in Inglewood in two years. So, look, you don't fire Jeff Fisher, whatever you think of him. They were loyal to him. You don't fire him in week 14 unless you're trying to do something big and get a jump on everybody else and not have to pretend that, oh, well, we're not sure if we're going to fire our coach, but we'd like to talk to you on back channels. You know, they've got a clean slate. You always hear coaches say, well, if you're interested in me, fire your coach first. Okay, well, they've gone ahead and done that. So if that means John Gruden, if that means a trade for Sean Payton, we'll find out. But uh, I don't see Harbaugh ending up there. I don't see Saban ending up there. Pete Carroll's not going to end up there. But there's some other A-list guys who I think will at least bend their ear to listen to Demoff and Kroenke and the Rams. I get it, Jason. I, I think it's an attractive job. I really do. And listen, I mentioned Gruden as a possibility yesterday, and he knows Kevin Demoff well. And I, I mentioned Sean Payton, the trade. That, to me, listen, makes sense. Make a telephone call. Take us through those two names. They really interest me. And what they're thinking in terms of big names and maybe some coordinators who could really be in the mix for the L.A. Rams. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I think those two guys you mentioned, it certainly does make sense. And you talk to people close to them. And it's rare that people don't say, well, my guy would at least listen, or I think he would at least listen, or I coached with him before. I kind of know where he is right now, and L.A. would make sense for him. Um, look, they, they need some pizzazz. They need a face of the franchise. Gruden comes in with an immediate cachet and a Lombardi trophy and the high Q factor. And he's going to help you. Look, if you need a guy to go out and help you sit down with certain CEOs to sell some tickets and maybe have a tequila shot or two, like, you could do worse than having John Gruden sitting with Kroenke, who isn't exactly personality plus, doing some of those things. You know, he can really be that sort of liaison between the team and Hollywood and the corporations out there and everything else. You know, Sean Payton, I think, is intriguing. Every year, there's sniffs around him. Teams, whether they be college or pro, have some interest in him. They kind of feel him out. Could a trade maybe happen with this team or that team? Now, they gave up a ton for Jared Goff, did the Rams, so you have to factor that in. But, you know, we'll see. Sean has a very strong relationship with Mickey Loomis, the GM there. And if it's a situation where it looks like a win-win, I wouldn't rule it out, even with him just signing that uh, extension a few, what, a year ago. Great information. I, I'm with you completely there, Jay. And, you know, when you look at the landscape of the NFL, what are some of the most coveted potential openings that you see becoming available after Week 17? Well, <clears throat> L.A., as we mentioned, is going to be way up there because they're, whatever you think of the quarterback, and not everybody loves them, you think there's at least enough there that you can mold if you're one of these top offensive minds. You're going to be moving into a world-class stadium. It's obviously a great city. Um, quality of life, everything else. And Kroenke has to spend. Has to spend to put a product in the field. If he doesn't put a product in the field, the people don't show. This is too big for him and the league for the NFL to fail in L.A. again. Everyone's waiting to see what happens in Indianapolis the next three weeks. Obviously, Andrew Luck has, uh, you know, a unique allure. They play on a fast track in a dome. They play another dome team in their division. It's a crappy division. You know if you're one of these offensive schemers, you've got a lot of the elements already lined up for you. Now, the roster's in a bit of disrepair, but in the AFC South, they're still in it right now. Um, the other jobs that, are, that, that people look at as are probably going to open up, I mean, Jacksonville's definitely going to open up. Buffalo, I'd be shocked if it doesn't open up. San, San Francisco, I'm told, will depend on whenever they bring in a new general manager what he thinks of the situation. But um, those are all much more bleak and much more dire and much more long-term in the eyes of a lot of these coaches than would be in L.A. or in Indianapolis. Well, Jason, you had the great report on Sunday on the NFL Today on CBS about Rex Ryan being fired. And perhaps as soon as this week, what's the latest on Rex? Yeah, I mean, look, there, there is sort of an attempted palace coup going on there where the GM Doug Whaley and some of the other high-ranking execs in that building have been working on owner Terry Pagula for weeks now saying the sooner that we do this the better it's inevitable it's going to happen anyway we're not going to be bringing them back 
Maybe we take a look at Cardell Jones in the process as well. And they believe the offensive coordinator, Anthony Lynn, would be the perfect interim head coach to step in at any point, coach them for a few weeks, and the schedule's conducive down the stretch. So if Rex got bumped, say, on Monday, as I'm told Pagula was contemplating it, then Lynn comes in and maybe beats the Browns and maybe beats the Jets and maybe keeps that job, which would be perfectly okay with a lot of the executives in that building because, hey, they're in job preserve mode anyway. So if we've got a coach we can control and we can sell the owner on and we're already compliant with the Rooney rule and we win a few games with them, then we might be out of the woods and we might all keep our jobs. Jason, are there any former head coaches that have been around the block in the NFL that you see getting another shot once these openings come to fruition? Well, we mentioned Gruden, and that would be L.A. and L.A. only. I mean, if they, and I'm not positive he would listen, listen to the Rams, but that would be the only team that could even get his ear a little bit, and we'll see where that goes. Tom Coughlin, I continue to hear, wants to get back in, maybe as a coach, maybe as an executive vice president, but I don't see him sitting on the sidelines another year, not at age 70. Then you've got a bunch of coordinators who have past head coaching experience. Some have gotten a lot of attention, like Josh McDaniels, and I do think Josh will, will get one of these jobs. I think there'll be multiple teams that want him. I wouldn't sleep on Todd Haley. Mike Smith, look at that Tampa defense the last five or six years. I've heard rumblings of potential Mike Smith as a head coach in Jacksonville with maybe Tom Coughlin as the, the senior advisor or, or EVP. Um, you know, and Jim Schwartz in Philadelphia has been a little bit up and down, but this isn't the sexiest crop of coaches in the world. I'm thinking five or six openings, but if we get a few unsuspected ones, Adam, and it gets to seven, eight, nine, look, th those guys have to come from somewhere.